I'm currently in the process of converting from color LCD printers to monochrome. I had 11 EPAX X1s, my original photon. The EPAX have been excellent, but monochrome printers are faster. So what I realized is that instead of 12 color printers, I could have four monochrome ones. And then I can get rid of all this tangled wiring mess, which by the way is ethernet cables, ethernet switches, heater cables and heater power supplies. So I'm breaking this down. I'm selling off the color ones. I guess I have uh, five more to sell. And I just got an EPAX E6 and I had this Mars monochrome. I bought the Mars from Amazon, $300 plus tax, so that's $318.75 for me. The uh, EPAX I got direct from them, and it was a pre-order, so I paid $289 with no tax and no shipping. It's $359 on their website now because the pre-order is over. So I got the Mars because it was out first and I bought it on Amazon. The EPAX has the side access door. So if you want to change an LCD panel, you can just open that up and get good access to the connector. That's really useful because with my previous printers, I had to turn them upside down. I even did it once without taking the resin out and ruined a stepper motor by spilling resin all over it. So I really like this easy serviceability. The Yelegu also has side access. I removed some of these side screws and the side panels didn't come right off. So I'm sure I could look up a video on how to remove that, but it wasn't as immediately obvious as the EPAX. Now, early reviews of this said that there was no way to change the LCD panel and you had to send the printer back to Elegoo if you wanted a replacement panel. That sounds prohibitively difficult to do, so if that's really true that you can't replace the panel yourself and it did burn out or you cracked it, I've certainly cracked panels before, or you scratched it, you'd pretty much have to get a new printer. But I haven't confirmed that myself. Maybe it's just that you can't buy extra LCDs from Elegoo at the moment. Maybe you'll be able to buy them in the future. Maybe it will take the same panel as the EPAX and you could use an EPAX LCD on it. I'm not really sure. All I know is that EPAX is committed to selling replacement LCDs. And I think that that's not the case with Elegoo, at least at this point. And I'm not even sure if Maybe they glue down the panel or something and it's really just not user replaceable. I just, it's what I've heard and I haven't looked into it further, but it's definitely an area of concern. The back of the EPAX has an ethernet port on it, which I really like because I run a printer farm and I have several printers and I can just plug them all into an ethernet switch and use software to load the files and start the prints without having to run over to the printers each time. There is no such connection on the Elegoo. This is metal and it has a metal plate. This has the uh, pivoting mechanism that the Photon did, and I was kind of happy to get away from that with the EPAX X1. The, uh, the EPAX didn't go out of alignment like these pivoting systems do, because when I pry the parts off them, I, I put it down and I pop off the parts, and that sort of levers on this. And it seems like they did a pretty good job beefing this up by putting in these big screws, but still it's gone out of alignment for me. And I like how EPAX stuck with the four screw system. Uh, if you look at the X1, 
they have these four bolts and once you set it, it never moves. And they kept that with this new system. So here it is. And they made this uh, engineering plastic. It's like a fiber reinforced plastic. What you can do when you injection mold is you can put glass fibers into the plastic to make it super strong. And then they bonded a thick aluminum plate to it that is machined flat. And that's been working really well. So they, they sort of went the extra step and had molds made to have all this injection molded, which really seems like a good idea for long-term production if you're gonna make a lot of something. Um, as far as printing, these use the CTB file and they can actually technically share files. But one of the first things I did was pull the USB stick out of a Mars, and put it in the EPAX and printed the file off it. And it was great. It worked right away. This is actually the fastest I've ever unboxed something and, and printed from it. I took this thing out of the box. I put on the plate, I poured in resin, I pushed play and it made a successful print. So I've never done that before. It may have only been like three minutes, not even five minutes to get printing with this. The only thing is the EPAX is a lot more powerful in the UV emission than the Mars. So it had more exposure time than what would be optimal. The good news about that is the EPAX is a lot faster. The bad news is I can't share files between them, so I I probably have to, you know, pick one of these printers and buy a bunch more with them and not mix and match. Because sharing files, like I thought I could share files because they're both CTB, but on the other hand, I can't because the CPACs will print Soraya Blue Resin, my favorite resin at the moment, with, uh, you know, like a three and a half second exposure. And by the way, on the, on the Photon, I exposed at 14 seconds for comparison. So that's how much faster this is than a Photon. But the Mars, I had to go up to five seconds exposure in order to have the part come out the proper dimensions and not having any failures, even all the way to the edge. These are parts I made on the Mars and on the EPAX. They're supposed to have two millimeter thick walls and on the Mars, they're coming out as 1.97. Now that's with a rather long for a monochrome exposure of five seconds. So in order to print a size with Soraya Blue, I would actually have to go even a little more than five seconds, maybe five and a half seconds. I took the same file and plugged the USB stick directly into the EPAX. And on that, it's coming out as 2.1 millimeters. So the light output of the EPAX is significantly stronger. So I'm gonna to have to lower the exposure time on the EPAX, maybe down to about three seconds or three and a half seconds in order to get these to print to two millimeters. But that's actually a good thing because then the print time is much less overall and it will make my parts faster. So I love how the EPAX is faster, but I probably can't keep both of these printers. I'm just gonna to have to pick one. The other thing I noticed, and it's pretty subtle, but if you look at this plate size, the LCD on these mono printers is larger than the Photon and the X1. And it's not a huge difference, but it actually is because I used to make nine parts at a time of the part that I make the most. And with either of these new printers, I can make 12 at once. So not only is four times faster than a photon in terms of exposure, 
but since it holds more parts, it's more than that. I mean, it really has like five times the throughput. So definitely excited about replacing a lot of my printers with fewer printers. I still need a bunch because I don't like changing resin very often. So I keep different resin types and colors in different printers. So I would definitely recommend a monochrome printer. I am thinking of standardizing on the EPAX because it's faster than the Mars. You can change the LCD on the EPAX and you can't change it on the Mars. And also it's quieter. So if I turn this on, or well actually it is on, it's on and you don't hear anything. But the reason why the Mars is off is because you can't leave it on. So I just powered it up. And you can see for some reason, the fan comes on even when it's not printing, which I don't really understand because you need the fan to cool during UV emission, but it doesn't need to cool when it's just sitting there. So that's something they could tweak maybe, is just hook it up a little differently. And they could compete with the EPAX if they either made their emitter more powerful to match the EPAX, or maybe if they lowered their price more to have enough of a price difference that it was worth getting the Mars. But in either case, they're both a lot faster than my old printers. So that sums up what I've learned so far, and I hope this was useful.